I wish I had never had you. I grew up with hearing that regularly from my mother. The words that came out of her mouth left a deep wound in my heart. We were a single parent family, and by the time I, Mary, was born, my father was already out. My mother was essentially his mistress, and I was the child born from their affair. I never met my father. My father's presence had no substance in my life, only in the stories that came from my mother. But it seems he did acknowledge me in some way, as we received child support payments that were more generous than necessary. However, it seems the child support was only promised until I turned 18. You'll need to find your own place once you're 18. My mother had been drilling this into me since I was 16. I wanted to part ways with her as soon as possible, so right after turning 18, I moved out and started working live-in jobs. I've always enjoyed cooking, so I ended up working in the kitchen of a nighttime establishment that happened to be hiring. You could earn more working as a server. All the other girls would say, but I, feeling insecure about my looks, found the idea of working in service to be out of the question. Until I was 20 years old, I hardly played and just worked hard. I worked hard to carve out my own future. As a result, by the time I turned 20, I had managed to save money. After gaining some clerical qualifications, I switched careers to become an office worker. There, I met my destiny and got married. My spouse was a colleague, James. James was kind, understanding, and supportive of me. We were attracted to each other, and as time went on, we decided to get married. At the time of our marriage, I was 25, and James was 28. Are you sure I'm the one for you? To this question, which I asked repeatedly, James would just smile and say, It's Mary I want. Since I had moved out, I had been estranged from my mother, so I didn't particularly report back to her. Still, her presence was always in my heart. Occasionally, I remind myself of past events and relationship with my mother, but I accepted it as a thing of the past and was determined to move on with my new life. James's parents had already passed away. It was just the two of us in our life together. We decided to support each other and build a new family. Life with just the two of us was sometimes quiet and serene. I didn't hate living alone, but life with James was truly enjoyable. When I was with him, even the little things of everyday life felt endearing. His smile and kindness brightened my days, especially since James really liked my cooking, praising it daily with, Mary's cooking is so delicious. Happy to hear, but are you sure it's okay to eat so much? I just can't stop eating. James would say this with such a serious face that it was adorable, making me laugh every time. And your lunches, Mary, they're always so tasty. Everyone around is jealous. Just knowing it's a love-filled lunchbox makes me happy, but the taste is the best part. Stop it. You're making me blush. But it's true. James's words made me so happy that I put even more effort into making lunchboxes. Every day was filled with happiness. I thought this life would go on forever. But one day, as I went to wash the lunchbox like usual, I opened the lid and my eyes widened. Leftovers. The contents of the lunchbox were more than half untouched. We had been married for two years. I had been making lunches for three years. This had never happened before. Wasn't it tasty? I thought about asking him directly, but I was too afraid of the answer. It was clear that something was happening, but I couldn't know why and I was just getting more and more anxious. After that day, the lunch would often be left uneaten, and proportionally, James started coming home later and later. There were even days he came home in the morning. I became more and more anxious and worried. Is it really okay for you to be working this much overtime? Even when I asked out of concern, he just answered, Yo. Yeah. That was all he would answer. Gradually, his weekend work increased, and our conversations dwindled. James seemed so tired that as soon as he came home, he would take a shower, quickly finish his dinner, and then fall asleep like a log. There were times when not even a single bite of the lovingly made lunch was touched. Eventually, I said, It's a waste, so please tell me if you don't want it. I had imagined him apologizing in a rush. Instead, he said, Yeah, you're right, sorry. I'll just grab something to eat for a while, so no need for the lunches. He said that and went straight to bed. I was shocked. Was all the joy he showed before just that cello? I wanted to confront him right then, but I couldn't bring myself to do it, seeing how tired and filled with sighs he had become lately. Maybe it wasn't just the workload. I began to doubt his love for me. We hardly talked anymore, and it had been months since we last went on a date. 
and no matter how busy work is, it seemed excessively so. I also began to question the fact that it was his job. I even noticed him sneaking peeks at his smartphone sometimes. Was it really all just work? I didn't want to think about it, but the fear of him having an affair crossed my mind. And then one day, an incident that further fueled my suspicions occurred. I am home. Welcome back. James came home late at night and went straight to the shower. He usually leaves his smartphone on the table. This screen was face down, making it invisible. But this time was different. Maybe by chance, or maybe he was careless. This screen was facing up. Just then, the phone made a sound. Likely a notification from WhatsApp. Despite knowing I shouldn't, I couldn't help but peek. And then I gasped. What? There was a WhatsApp notification clearly visible on the screen. Thanks for earlier. Looking forward to next time. Was the message. The sender was listed as Maggie. As far as I knew, there was no Maggie in his acquaintances. No, but this doesn't necessarily mean it's an affair. It could be a colleague. My heart was pounding as I froze in place, and then another WhatsApp message came in. Just got home. I'll keep it a secret, so make sure you do too. The moment I saw that message, I was enveloped in despair. Is this why he's been coming home late, all the overtime and weekend work, and him not wanting lunches anymore because he's tired of me? Various questions crossed my mind. Tears started to well up slowly. No, it's not confirmed yet. I have to trust him. Doubt and trust, two opposite feelings, were clashing. My mind was confused. Then he came out of the bathroom. Ah. I hurriedly wiped away my tears. He tilted his head at my suspicious behavior. What's wrong? Nothing. Oh, sorry, dinner, right? If you haven't prepared anything yet, it's fine. What? I grabbed something at the convenience store during work, just snacked on that. I see. You've been late a lot lately. You seem really busy. Oh uh, yeah, so I'm pretty tired. I'm going to bed. He went to the bedroom in a slightly awkward manner, as if fleeing. I felt the need to confront him and talk to him, but it couldn't do anything. From that day on, my distrust towards James only grew. Yet, I wanted to believe in him, didn't want to part ways. Such feelings surged within me. As usual, he came home late, and even when he did, he wouldn't meet my eyes. He seemed distant. Despite my desire to trust him, my suspicions only deepened. Then one day, I saw something I wished I hadn't. That day, I decided to welcome him with a delicious meal and talk things over, so I went shopping at a fancy supermarket behind the station, a bit away from our home. But on my way back, I saw him in a cafe. Sitting in front of him was a young and beautiful woman. They seemed to be having a serious conversation. Who is she? They appeared very close. The thought crossed my mind. Surely, this woman must be the one from the WhatsApp messages. So, Maggie is the woman. He must have been unable to bring it up. And I didn't want to hear it. From his mouth, I found someone else I love. Such words would be too painful. So, I decided to say it for him. Let's get a divorce. He looked terribly surprised. It must have been unexpected for him. Why? Absolutely not. James vehemently refused, visibly shaken. I don't love you anymore. There's no point in being together. Are you kidding? Why make such a face? Even though you must be relieved inside. Such farts bubbled up. It's you who found someone else, right? I held back the urge to say so. I don't even want to see your face anymore. After I blurted that out, he had nothing more to say. That silence reminded me that our relationship was over. And so, we became strangers to each other. It felt like there was a hole in my heart. It was so painful. Parting with someone you had walked with for a long time left a deep wound in your heart. But I thought time would heal it. I told myself that as time passed, this pain would lessen. With that thought, I started living alone in a new apartment for the first time in a while. Sometimes I wanted to cry, but I lived holding it back. Then, one day, I got a call from someone on my smartphone. Uh. No. My body froze instinctively. Why now? The call was from my mother. I hadn't been in contact with her for years since leaving home. She shouldn't even know about the divorce, let alone my marriage. I wanted to avoid any further involvement if possible. I thought I had ended my relationship with my mother, so her call was unexpected. Yet, I answered the call. Hello. Ah, Mary, it's been a while. It was a familiar voice. It's been a while. 
What do you want? How cold can you be to your mother? Well, I don't really need anything big. What? You got divorced. Eh? How did? How did my mother know about that? I hadn't even reported my marriage. As I remained silent, my mother continued with a laugh. Surprised, huh? You didn't even tell me you got married. That's because. Why did you divorce such a good man? He was generous with money, the best. Huh? I couldn't grasp what my mother was saying at first. Then she started talking nonstop. About a year ago, maybe, I happened to get a copy of the family register and found out you were married. So I did some digging and went directly to your house. Huh? Why would you do that? I was broke. Thought I'd ask you for a loan. You could have just called me first. What if you had just refused to call? I didn't think you'd lend me money so easily. So I thought I'd catch you so you couldn't escape. My mother laughed loudly, without any malice. Then, you weren't home but your husband was. When I said I was your mother, he started greeting me and even lent me money on the spot. Eh? I didn't know that James had interacted with my mother, even exchanging money. Since then, I've relied on him whenever I was in a pinch. But hearing about your divorce, I wondered what would happen to my support. I came to the apartment, but no one was there, so I called you. You're at the apartment now? Yes. I rang the bell so many times, but no one came out. What? Have you moved already? Normally, James would be off work. Maybe he went out somewhere. Perhaps. On a date? Such a thought crossed my mind momentarily. Understood. Let's talk for now. I decided to meet with my mother at the nearest diner to hear everything from her. Ka, here, over here, this way. Despite the years, my mother hadn't changed at all. Bleached hair, heavy makeup, flashy clothes. I glanced at her and sat down opposite her. How much exactly did you get from James? Eh, I don't remember, but less than $2,000 a month. What? That much? Why didn't you tell me anything? Your husband said not to tell you. He said he'd give me the money if I didn't. He was such a good husband. It's a waste. I didn't know. Why would James do that? So, about the money. Now that this has happened, you, my daughter, will support me, right? There's no way I'm going to do that. Huh? As I said that, my mother, who had been smiling, suddenly changed her expression. Her face turned red as she leaned forward. What? You're going to abandon your mother when she's in trouble. And you have the nerve to say that after treating me like a nuisance all this time. And to think you even troubled James. Embarrassing. Pathetic. Such feelings welled up. I don't have any money to give you. Stay away from me and James for good. As I let out my emotions, my mother trembled. How dare you say that to your mother? You're not my mother. As I raised my voice, my mother seemed to snap. I didn't even want to give birth to you, you useless thing. She raised her arm as she shouted. I involuntarily closed my eyes. But at the moment her hand was about to reach me. What are you doing? James appeared, intervening. Why are you here? I was called by your mother. He sat down beside me, breathing heavily, as if he had rushed over. Then he looked straight at my mother. This isn't what we agreed on, is it? When I looked at his face, he gave a troubled smile and started explaining everything that had happened. The first day my mother visited the apartment, he was shocked by her brazen behavior and decided then that she should never meet me again. I had heard about your mother from you, Mary. Indeed. I had told him about the verbal abuse I received from my mother daily before we were married, that I hadn't seen her since I left home at 18 and never wanted to see her again. So, when I first met your mother, I made her promise I would pay her in exchange for her not contacting or meeting you. But now... But I heard you got divorced. If I can't get money from you anymore, I have to ask Mary, right? James sighed deeply. Either way, I was planning to cut off the support soon. Uh. James took out a file from his bag and started laying it out on the table. This is. You've been causing quite a bit of trouble here and there, haven't you? This is the evidence. What? If I submit this to the appropriate authorities, it could lead to certain penalties. Might it also trouble the people you're currently involved with? Why would you go to such lengths? My mother looked at him, her face turning pale with fear. I've had this investigated over the past few months. Well, it cost a good amount of money. That's... Please, don't get involved with us ever again. Or you know what will happen. Heck. My mother trembled and hung her head low. After a moment, she managed to squeeze out. Understood. And fled as if escaping. 
Phew. I hope this is the end of it. He smiled with a sense of relief and went on to tell me everything. By the way, that WhatsApp message from Maggie was actually from my mother. I never would have guessed that Maggie was actually my mother, Margaret. Ever since meeting my mother, he had been looking for a way to sever ties with her. So, he hired a detective agency to find out what she was up to. Of course, it cost money, as did the financial support for my mother. That's why he took up part-time jobs after work and on weekends. Our company doesn't pay well, but part-time work was allowed. To take on a part-time job, he had to finish his main job on time. That's why he didn't have time to eat lunch slowly. Ah. That's why the lunchbox was. Yo, I'm sorry. I always thought I'd find a moment to eat, but it always ended up being impossible, and I just forgot about it. But I saw it. So what? You talking intimately with a beautiful woman. A beautiful woman? Ah. So you do know her? That was the detective. What? I met her today to receive these documents. Is that so? Yo, yeah. now that you mention it, she is pretty. What? Did you think I was cheating? Why didn't you consult me? I wonder why. He gave her eye smile and tilted his head. Of course, he couldn't say being preyed upon by his wife's mother and searching for her weaknesses. I'm sorry. He had been struggling so much on his own, all for me. Yet, without discussing it, I wrongfully suspected him of cheating and falsely demanded a divorce based on my feelings. Well, my actions were indeed suspicious, uh, but it's good to know you didn't hate me. I'm sorry. I'll repay the money you gave to my mother, even if it takes years. He shook his head sideways. No need. But? No need. Instead, I have a request. A request? He nodded and gently took my hand. Will you make lunch for me again? I promise I won't leave any this time. Eh? Marry me again, please. It felt like an electric current ran through my whole body. Yes. Yes. I cried so much as I agreed to marry him again. After that, we remarried and became husband and wife again. So far, there's been no word from my mother. She might say something again, but this time, we promised to consult each other about anything. If one of us had just spoken up at that time, we wouldn't have needed to go through a divorce. To think I misunderstood and didn't trust you. I'm such an idiot. He laughed out loud as I sighed. I guess I'm not so bad after all. Jealousy means I'm loved, right? I laughed at his words, but I was also very embarrassed. Oh. Stop it. Here, take this. Have a good day. I handed him the lunch bag, and he waved cheerily. Thanks, I'm off then. And headed to work. Now then, maybe I should go shopping for dinner. I need to think about tomorrow's lunch too. Last night, he happily showed me the empty lunch box. Remembering that, I took off my apron and picked up my shopping list, feeling excited. I went shopping feeling happy that my daily life with him was gradually returning to a calmer one.